So many of you have been wanting original movies, right? You've been wanting original sequels, different concepts for movies. Well, damn it, you got one. Welcome to Gen X Reviews. My name is Rudy. I give reviews from a Gen Xer's point of view. And just like you, I love 2019's Joker. I thought it was one of the best comic book movies ever made. I thought it was a really graphic comic book style movie that again had a lot of layers of social commentary and again it gave Joaquin Phoenix the platform to win an Oscar and the film itself was nominated for best picture so when I heard they were going to do a sequel I immediately didn't like the idea I mean I think they had enough story there and what else was there to tell with the Joker I was completely against it and then when I heard Joaquin Phoenix got on board and they were doing a musical I was really pushing off on the idea I'm like what are you talking about a musical with Lady Gaga but then I caught I was really curious about it because I know Joaquin Phoenix takes his art seriously and he wouldn't just do a generic sequel that maybe we're all expecting. And the concept of it just kind of had my attention. So again, I didn't know what to expect with this movie. It was one of my most anticipated movies of the year. So I walked in and here's what it's about. Struggling with his dual identity, failed comedian Arthur Fleck meets the love of his life, Harley Quinn, while incarcerated at Arkham State Asylum. Now the film takes place two years after the events of Joker and Arthur Fleck is now facing trial for the events that he did and the murders that took place in the first Joker. And his lawyer is pushing for the defense of insanity because they feel that Joker is completely different from Arthur Fleck. That this duality was a product of his abuse as a kid growing up. Which makes sense for the defense when you consider all the horrible abuse and events that took place with him as a child that they talked about in Joker Part 1. In Arkham Asylum, he does meet Harley Quinn in music class, and the psychiatrists and doctors in the movie set it up perfectly, kind of set the stage for the movie. They said music helps people cope that have mental illness. Music helps people cope with the horrible events that have taken place in their lives that kind of subdued in their conscious or what's presently going on. So when the musical cues start and the musical scenes start in the movie, it makes sense considering what's going on in the film. And if you think about it, in the original Joker, he would often daydream that he was actually at the talk show talking to Murray, talking about his mother and how much he loved her. So again, the movie did set up that delusional state. They're just elaborating it more in part two. And when you consider the character of Arthur Fleck, who's been through a horrible life, and he's even pretended to have a girlfriend or somebody interested in him, like in part one, when he meets Harley Quinn and she shows interest in him, all the musical scores and cues that you see in the movie are all about love and romance and finally finding somebody. So again, it makes sense with the context they've set up. Now I'm gonna say this film is made for nobody. The movie going audience that gave Deadpool and Wolverine a billion dollars, the movie going audience that loves aliens, the general young audience that goes to see these movies, this movie wasn't made for them. I'm completely sold on the idea that Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix said, okay, we made a billion dollars, we have total freedom to do whatever we want. We're gonna do something original and something that we wanna do. And again, I know Joaquin Phoenix takes his art seriously, and he wasn't going to do just a general generic sequel. And you can kind of see that if you go and edit this movie and remove the musical sequences, you have a generic sequel. But they wanted to do something daring and different and dive into the psyche of the Joker and his delusional states, which I consider a brave move. But again, no one's going to like it. A lot of people, there's a couple of people that walked out of my theater because they were just so bored. Uh, I know a lot of young audiences are going to say it sucked. I know it's going to get poor reviews. A lot of people are going to call it a generic a musical, many people are going to find it bleak and boring, and I'm here to say I respectfully disagree. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of musicals. I mean, I love the Blues Brothers, the Little Shop of Horrors in Greece. Those are technically musicals, but I wouldn't go see a musical like Wicked or something like that. But walking in this movie, knowing it was going to be a musical, and I had those expectations set, I was prepared for what I was going to see. So. The musical scores and again how they set it up within the film it all made sense now i can see people who didn't know this and were walking into this film and it's complete shock like what's going on i can see people walking out angry and like this is not what we want and who is this made for i can totally understand that but again understanding all the complexities and layers and understanding folly a da delusion carried by two it makes sense this film in essence is a tragic opera that's what it really is so when you walk into this movie if you're going to see it expect a operatic heartbreaking story about Arthur Fleck. The ending, I'm not going to give that away, but the ending really just like hit me right here because if you look at Arthur as a character of himself, somebody who's always been lonely, somebody who's pretended to have somebody that cared for him, suddenly gets attention from this Joker, this violent persona that's within him. And he's there's a duality there, like that's not really me, I'm really Arthur Fleck, maybe I'm the Joker. So 
it's so tragic that it stuck with me and I wasn't expecting that ending. I was expecting a cliche comic book movie ending, something that's uh, expected or you can see coming. I did not see this ending coming. And again, it plays like a tragic opera, which if you think about it is incredibly brave and bold for Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix to do, because again, I know this movie's not gonna make a billion dollars. I know many people are gonna say it suck. I'm pretty sure if you're watching this review and you typed in Joker or Folly I Do, all the reviews say it sucked. What the hell was this? I'm sure many people don't like it because, again, it's not made for us, the current audiences of today. It's not. It was an artistic choice for a character that lives in a delusional space that is a romantic and loves classic Hollywood movies. And I under I get it. I completely get it. Now, will I see this movie again? Probably not. Will I buy it? I definitely will. Keep in mind, this is a movie that you really have to prepare yourself for. You're going to have to sit through this film and be totally vested in it. And again, I know it won't land with a lot of audiences nowadays. I know a lot of people are going to hate it and say horrible things about it. But again, if you look at it from a character study standpoint and you dive into the psyche of Arthur Fleck, the duality conversation and the delusions and what he really wants as a person, it's incredibly tragic. And it, that ending is going to stay with me for a while. Having said that, I'm going to give Joker a folly I do. Thumbs up. In closing, I wanted to just say I, this movie has nothing to do with me being an MCU hater. I'm not the, this is honestly not a comic book movie. It's a character study on Arthur Fleck. And it dives into a bold direction that I think many directors don't get the opportunity to explore. And I think because of the success of Joker Part 1, Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix had just a, a blank check. Just do whatever the hell you want. We trust you. And they did that. And again, it's a bold choice. And I think it's not going to land with many audiences. But through the test of time, I think people will appreciate it for what it is, a bold sequel. Well, that's my review for Joker Folly. I do. I hope you enjoyed it. If you agree or disagree with me, put some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I would greatly appreciate it. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Peace.